So we're uh, splitting a Super A to put a new clutch in, so I'm going to show you a few things you have to do before you split it and the way to safely split the tractor. So, uh, First thing you have to remove is a wiring harness that runs along the whole side of the tractor, so your wiring harness is back to here. Uh, you have to remove your throttle linkage. You have to remove the linkage to your uh, choke, this choke rod. Um, you have to remove the gas tank, the hood, the grill. Um, you have to remove the steering wheel, the steering wheel uh, knuckle that goes into here. <coughs> um, you also got to remove the starter motor from inside here. Um, what else? Yep, your uh, remember your throttle goes all the way up to here. Um, I removed all the plugs. You have to remove the hydraulic line that runs from that green spot there to here. Um, and then you're going to want to, for safety, you really have to do this. You have to put this block in here so the tractor can't tip like this, the front. <coughs> then you need a block under here as well. Uh, you block your tires or something. These are bags of soybeans, so they can't roll. Um, what else? Yeah. It's most of the stuff you have to remove off the tractor. Then you have to block it up safely. This one I carved uh, some blocks out. And the goal is this was to keep the oil pan from touching. You know, I didn't want to jack up the tractor on the oil pan. I want to jack up the tractor on this lip, just basically under the block. So I carved this block out in the same shape, making sure to avoid the two check oil check plugs. Okay, um, these two eight by eight pieces of wood, hardwood, and a bottle jack and some jack stands to hold the front of the tractor state safe pull the six bolts after I have this connected safely and then roll the tractor away. This worked really good. Just a U out of metal basically with the hole drilled for holding the front of the tractor. I drilled the other two holes in case I wanted to move it back to here at some point in the future for other reasons. Um, so I have the four bolt pattern. Um, make sure to block your tires and then get in there. You're going to need to take out <coughs> A whole bunch of stuff. You gotta have to take up your flywheel, your clutch pressure plate, and your clutch from over here, and your pilot bushing, which was inside of there. And you're also gonna have to pull off of this the throw out bearing carrier and the throw out bearing. Uh, the bearing carrier can be removed by removing from the bottom. There's a little pin that holds the bearing carrier here, and on the top there's a pin that gets knocked out through that hole. We can see him on the other side when it comes out. And there's the pin that's come out. There's little holes in there for two cotter pins that keep the bearing carrier in there as well. So once you get that all pulled out, you should have something clean like this. Clean off your splines. Clean off the end of the shaft here. And get your pilot bushing out. And then you're ready to put it back together safely. So uh, on mine, my pilot bushing and my clutch were both bad. This is my pressure plate. You can see the fingers are worn off on it. And the pilot bushing that was in there looks like that. That's its thickness. It was junk. So this is what a pilot bushing should look like. And this is what the clutch plate, the pressure plate should look like. See the fingers on that? So. We're going to put that all together, put in the new throw-up bearing as well, and then we should have a good shifting tractor. Well, there's a trick to know about these. If your pilot bushing is in better shape than mine was, you know, it's stuck in like this. The way to get these things out, because this thing's down flush, is to squirt some grease inside the pilot bushing, and then get a piece of matching metal and pound it in there. And the hydraulic action will force the bushing out. But on mine, I didn't have any bushing left, so it wasn't an issue. So anyway, I hope that's helpful for everybody, and we'll uh, put it together next. So here's the flywheel back on, and new pilot bushing in, and the carrier arm, and the bearing back on. You can see the pins through, and the cotter pins in there, and down there, pin through and cotter pin in there. And next will be the clutch and the pressure plate. Alright, so the clutch 
is in and so is the pressure plate. So now I'm going to get that into that hole and the spline lined up right. So there you go, she's all back together, all the new guts are inside of her, but the bushing inside of here is shot, so we're going to have to replace the bushing in here. See how it slops back and forth, and that messes with your the free travel of your clutch, so you can't get the right adjustment, and you're not getting pro proper clutch, so i got to pull off this tire now, and pull off this brake pedal, hammer it off, run the shaft through. So the saga continues. So next we're going to get a torch. Torch, heat this up, knock this piece off, pull the tire, slide the shaft out, and replace the bushing in the frame. Maybe replace some bushings in here. And then we'll have put it all back together and wire the tires off. I'm going to get a new tire on it because this tire's shot. This tire's still in good shape. But this tire's really weather-checked and junk. And then the next steps of uh, get this stuff back all on, get the free play adjusted correct, so you have a you need to have about a one and one between one and one and one quarter free play before the the bearing gets engaged, and then uh, yeah, then we can start putting all the parts back on. So I'll give you a shot after. So we got our tire pulled off, and we pulled out the shaft. And uh, there's two bushings in here. There's a bushing, and then there's about a quarter inch, and then another bushing on the other side. And the space in between is for the channel. So when you fill it up with grease, rotate. We got our tractor jacked up, and a little safety on it here. And sent the tire off and the shaft, and the pedal. And pull the pedal. The pedal goes right there. So, I'm going to get that shaft, put that bushing back in the other side, run the shaft through, put the pedal back on, just a free play, and then we should be able to put all the rest of the stuff on it. So, that's it for today. Off to the machine shop and the tire store for a new tire, because that tire was really bad weather checked anyway, so might as well replace it while we have it. Alright, so our clutch job's done. <coughs> And what was holding us up, and the thing you wouldn't really think about would be a problem on a clutch, is actually this shaft that the clutch pedal rides on, and the end of the shaft is attached to the left brake pedal. Alright, and our problem was, is number one, our shaft was worn, and the biggest problem was that there's two bushings inside this part of the body, and they were worn right off. So, if those bushings are worn out, this whole shaft goes back and forth when you're depressing the clutch and you can never get it to adjust correctly or work right and you can see on the the old shaft how badly worn it was I don't know if you can get a good there you go you can see the shaft was worn real bad you can see where the bearings used to be here inside the body and it's just slopping back and forth or this big groove down. And although it was only moving about a quarter inch, that quarter inch really matters because that's you're losing all your free play. So on this, your free play should be just till it engage to, to, until you feel a little bit of resistance that's about an inch and a quarter, right? On the pedal. And so after fixing that, we have a nice working clutch. And since you have to pull off the tire to get the shaft out, the brake shaft, and you have, so I replaced the tire. So I have a nice new tire. And you can see in here, you might be able to see the bushing. Oh, there you go, you can see the bushing now. Nice brass bushing in there. So Those little bushings make a huge difference in how your clutch performs. So. That's how we did our clutch, and if you ever do a clutch job and you're having problems after you've replaced all the stuff inside here and it's still not working right, be sure to go back here and see what kind of play you're getting in that part of the tractor, and that might be your problem. 
and it's a pain in the ass to fix. But once it's fixed, it should last for another 50, 60 years. This, this is a 60 year old tractor, so I have to give the guys credit that they probably didn't design these to for that bushing to last 60 years, but um, now we replaced it, this thing should last 50 or 60 more years until we have to replace this bushing. We'll probably have to replace the clutch and stuff before. So, oh, Another trick to tell you real quick is uh, when you have the starter motor off like we have here, a good way to check to see that you have the proper um, adjustment is to rock the tractor back and forth while you have the clutch depressed and look at the flywheel. If you the clutch fully depressed and you are rocking it, you should see that the flywheel shouldn't move. And when you release the clutch back and it engages and it's in gear, you should see the flywheel start to scoot back and forth. So, anyhow, that was our adventure. Uh, the clutch actually wasn't that bad to replace. I, mean, I thought splitting the tractor and doing the clutch would have been the biggest challenge, but it ended up being the biggest challenge was this brake pedal shaft and it took me a couple weeks to get the part and the bushings. Actually I had to get the bushings made. So um, anyhow I hope that this is helpful for some people and uh, you have a great day.